Everybody, welcome in. Today we are going to talk about song structure. Now, I know that's not the sexiest of terms, but I will tell you this, people come to me all the time asking, how can they get better at mixing? Like, what tricks can I learn? And honestly, my answer is learn the music get the structure down and follow the natural song structure of the track. So today we're gonna jump into that. I'm gonna teach a bit. I'm gonna talk a little bit about music theory. So for those of you who this is a refresher, that's great. For those of you who are getting this for the first time, I'm gonna make sure I take it fairly slow so that you can follow along. All right, let's come on over to my whiteboard. The first thing I wanna talk about to make sure that we're all on the same page is uh, some just terminology. So beats, bars and phrases. So really quick, a beat, a beat is a head nod, right? So every time you nod your beat, uh, and every time you nod your head, that's a beat. A bar, a bar is a group of beats. Four, four beats to a bar. And again, some of this is gonna be review for some of you. Um, and then a phrase, a phrase is a group of bars. Four bars, so one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. That is a phrase. So four bars equal one phrase, and how many beats is that? Four times four, 16 beats. Uh, very good. So if I were to write out a phrase here, this could be said three different ways. One phrase, four bars, or 16 beats. It's all the same. It's like saying 30 seconds or half a minute. Um, and on that note, when we talk about music, we need to use this terminology. So music is a language, just like English, Spanish, French. We need to get used to speaking that language. So instead of saying, if I were to ask you, how long is that intro? And instead of saying, oh, the intro is like 31 seconds, that wouldn't be an accurate way of describing the length of the intro. Instead, saying that it is four bars or 16 bars or four phrases, something like that would be a better, more accurate way to describe it. The most popular term and the most common term uh, out of these three is bars. So we're gonna use bars a lot today, but I'm also gonna talk about phrasing as well. So um, hopefully you got that, let's continue on here. The idea, I'm gonna, I wanna like zoom out for a little bit. Let's talk about the actual goal of mixing two songs together, right? The idea is that we're gonna have one song playing. As that song is playing, we are mixing in a second song. For a period of time, these two are overlapping. Well, what part of the song is this? What part of the song is that? Right, like that's what we're really trying to figure out. Now hopefully we've beat matched, whether that's manual beat matching, whether that's using sync, we've beat matched these tracks. We're using two songs that are within sort of a, a relatively close BPM range. I like to use the BPM range of four, plus or minus four. So if a song is 100 beats per minute, um, I usually like to keep within 96 to 104. That would sort of be like my rule of thumb. So assuming that that's already done and song A and song B are both within that range, we're good to go, right? That's like our number one thing that I'm kind of checking off. Check, uh, number one. Number two, how do we get in? And number three, how do we get out? So that's what these are for. Like I need to figure out how long is this and how long is that? Like at what point do I start mixing these songs together? And especially if you are a beginner, this is something that is great to figure out from the beginning here as you get started on your journey. And if you're already into your journey, I can almost guarantee that if you've never really fully learned this, um, like I had, uh, you know, I was mixing for years before I really started to understand that song structure matters and where I get out of this song matters and that I'm basically trying to solve this issue of, you know, what are these different lengths and how long are these different lengths of the song? It's kind of like a, like a Lego puzzle or whatnot, right? You're, you're breaking these things down. So the decomposition of the song is super important and that all is what falls under song structure. So um, we are gonna do this today. I'm gonna teach you my method of how we go in and break down songs. I like to call it mapping out the song. It's basically coming up with the structure of what the song is. Um, all right, so um, let's, let's Keep this here, I'm gonna keep going now. Let's talk about different parts of the song. So we've got some terms we're gonna throw out here. It's like the beginning of the song, intro, right? Um, the part that everybody sings along to, the chorus. Um, you might have a verse or two, or three, or four. 
The verse is the story part, right? So that's like the story part of the song. Um, I might have a bridge. Bridge could be like a break, could be a breakdown, could be just a, a departure from what is normally happening in the song. Uh, oftentimes, the bridge is one of my favorite parts of most songs. Um, and then there might be an outro, right? Um, and these are your sort of five basic parts of the song. Now there's all sorts of other things, like I might have like a pre-chorus, right? Um, I might have even like a little section that I don't even know what to call. Like it's just this little, this little section that happens in the song. Um, and maybe it's uh, like this, I don't know, this is sort of like a fill or whatnot that happens or I'm not even maybe sure, is that, a, is that a verse, is it a bridge, is it a chorus? Like these are all the things that we're gonna be figuring out today and I'm hopefully gonna be able to give you some terminology to help you dissect the music that you already have in your library. Now if you're playing, you know, like electronic dance music, maybe songs without words um, or just EDM songs that have a drop, the drop would sort of be the same thing as like a chorus, right? There's multiple drops in dance music, uh, most dance music, and that's something that is anticipated. So the same way as the chorus is anticipated, the drop is also anticipated. I also might have like a build, and a build is sort of like, either like our pre-chorus is kind of like our, our build. Um, I might also have just like this breakdown, which would sort of be like our bridge, right? Like we have these different sections and these different terms. Um, when it comes to electronic dance music. And even if you had a track that was purely instrumental, it might seem like it's all just one track, that it's just a, a drum pattern. But if you go in and then you listen to this instrumental track, especially like an instrumental um, song that is a full song, or the instrumental version of a popular song, you'll hear the changes. In the, in the phrasing, and you'll hear the changes in the song. And that's one of the things that I hope to do with you today is to change the way that you're listening to music and have you pay attention to where these changes are in the song. Because where those changes are in the song, we are actually gonna use in how we mix these songs together. All right, so um, the last thing I'll do before we move over to our DJ software is let me just kind of map out what like a typical song might look like. So we might have like an intro, and then maybe a verse, then a chorus, then a verse, uh, then maybe another chorus, then maybe a bridge, then another chorus, then maybe an outro. Might look something like that, right? So this is what like a typical song might look like. And if I were to change the song over, I would change the song over here. Let me change my pen actually. Let's see, if I were to change the song over, I would change the song here, here, maybe here, here, and here. So you'll notice that something that I'm um, highlighting here is that when I change the song over at all of these red arrow points that I've marked off, these all happen to be after the chorus. So I want the chorus to play, I want the music to get to the crescendo, the, the high point of the song before changing it over. Right? This is sort of our, our most basic technique when it comes to mixing. So in order to achieve that, I'm gonna go back over here, back to our, our overview. This then, this right here, this would be our chorus, or technically our drop, right? Um, so what I need to know is how long is that section? How long is the chorus? Um, how long is the drop? And then this section that I'd be mixing in right here, this would typically be my intro. And I need to know how long is the intro, right? Like how many bars is the intro? If they are the same amount, like let's say the chorus was eight bars and let's say the intro was eight bars. Well then this makes it really easy because if I start the intro, when the chorus starts, they should play together nicely for eight bars and by the time the chorus is done, the intro is also done and now I'm into the new song. So hopefully that makes sense for you. Let's come on over to our DJ software. All right, so I am using Serato DJ Pro today and I've actually got this hooked up to a Serato controller. Um, I'm going to unplug the controller. So I know some of you might wanna be doing this exercise with the controller plugged in. We don't need to. Uh, I wanna use it in offline mode actually because I wanna show you that um, mapping out these songs, this is all preparation. So you would do this before the gig. Um, in fact, actually a lot of 
plane trips and train rides and <laughs> Uber rides for me. I'm spent actually, you know, mapping songs out in the car, literally setting up, um, you know, the track and figuring those things out. So um, I don't want you to think that you need to be plugged into your rig in order to do this. You could be doing this uh, at work even or at school, uh, but don't. Don't tell your teachers or your boss that I said that that was okay. Um, all right, so come on over to um, our Serato DJ Pro and uh, there's a couple of things that I want to make sure that you have turned on if you're a Serato user. Um, there are these two decks. Let's just focus on one deck for now. Um, I feel like it's very easy, at least for me, to lose focus. So I like to only have what I'm looking at at one time. Um, so I, I'm on this one deck first, and then um, let's come over to the settings. You'll notice that my waveform, there's no grid that's here. And I actually want the grid to show up. So some of you may not have a grid also on uh, your Serato, and let me show you how to turn it on. So if I go over to the settings, and inside of here, inside of the preferences for sync, snap to beat grid, go ahead and turn that on. Um, and then when I come back out, um, let's also do this one, um, which we, we'll get to later, which is sort cues and loops chronologically. Let's turn that on too. We're actually not gonna set any cues yet. Um, we're going to do that a little bit later. Um, but you'll now see that the grid has shown up. So uh, I can see one, two, three, four, five. You can see all these numbers. This is, these are showing the bar mark. So if I'm all the way here, like you can even see this. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three. So this is gonna help us. This is a great guide to help us count what bar we're on and where the bars are at. So let's go back here. And I also wanna show you one more feature, which is uh, plus or minus. This is a shortcut here, keyboard shortcut. You don't need to hit shift or anything like that. It's literally just the plus and the minus. So that's to zoom in and out of the waveform. So if I come up here, uh, you'll see plus, minus. So let's zoom in a little bit just so I can see and make sure that the grid is, is right there and right lined up. Um, and then now what I'm gonna do is I am going to do some mapping. So I told you I had this technique, it's called mapping out the song. Uh, I'm gonna display my whiteboard and I'm actually gonna take physical notes so that you can see how I'm mapping out the song. I'm going to make a mark for every one of the phrase. So again, a phrase is four bars. So I'll be counting four bars, then make a mark. The whole time I'm also gonna be thinking, what section is this? Is this an intro? Is it a verse? Is it a chorus? And you'll even probably see with some of my notes, there'll be times where maybe I'm not even so sure of what it is, or you know, is it really a verse, or is that a pre-chorus? Um, and I'll make notes, and you'll see that, and you'll be able to follow along. All right, so here we go. Um, I also wanna remind people that you know because this is a video and this is recorded, the nice thing about this, you can always pause, you can always rewind, just to make sure that you're really understanding this concept. This is a huge, important concept. Um, all right, here we go. By the way, a shortcut key for playing on the left deck, W. Um, and for the right deck, it's S. So I'm gonna hit W. Here we go. Two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, 4, 2, 3, 4, 1. It's a rap verse. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 1. This is another verse, it's like a singing verse. And one, two, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. Different section, right? Need you now. One. Do you feel like how this is kind of coming up? Right? Anticipating something. Here we go. And one. This is our chorus. Two. Oh, I'm sorry, not two. And one. And that's the other thing. If you get lost, the music will tell you where the change is. One, 
two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one. So this is a little half of a phrase section. We'll talk about that. Another verse, another rap verse. One, two, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. That I need you. This is the same as this. Feel how it's coming up. And one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. Bridge. One. And one. So this still feels like it's coming up, but it's the vocals of the chorus. And one. Two, three, four, two, three, four, one. Four, two, three, four, one. This is like an acapella section. One. You can consider this the outro. Awesome. Okay, so that's the entire song. We've got the whole thing mapped out now. Now what I can do is, instead of this being in phrases, we can convert this over to bars. So this is uh, eight bars, eight bars, eight bars, eight bars. They're all eight bars except for this little section. That's two bars. Eight, 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 eight. Eight, great, awesome. Now, again, the parts that I would wanna get out, I would wanna get out here, or even maybe after here. Um, I would wanna get out here and here, and maybe out of the outro, out of that acapella outro. Maybe I would potentially wanna get out here after the bridge. So these are the different points. And now I need to know what's before that, right? So I now know that this is eight bars. This is eight bars, this is eight bars, eight bars, and eight bars, right? Like, I know those different sections. And this is super important for me being able to do that. Now, our in point, our in, is this right here. It's an eight bar intro to get in. Um, and now, actually, when I start to put this together, I now know this song. So when I mix it with any other song, I already know it. And once I've mapped this out once, it's mapped out forever. So now when I mix these songs together, I know with confidence this is a good section to get out of the song and I know how long it is. Now, the nice thing about the software today is I've got an actual place to write it. Because before this, I started mixing on, on vinyl records. So I used to have to write this information on the label of the vinyl record or on the sleeve of the vinyl record, I would write some of these things. Like the intro is eight bars, the intro is four bars, the chorus is four bars, the chorus is eight bars. I would write that on the actual label. Now we would do the same thing, except for now it can be stored in the software and we're actually gonna be able to use hot cues to help us separate out these tracks. That's a little tease of where we're going next. Um, I hope that this makes sense to you. I hope that uh, this is starting to settle in. I know it sounds daunting, but once you do this once, it's done forever. And this is really getting a chance to know the music that you're mixing. When people ask me how they get better as a DJ, how the mixing gets better as a DJ, it is this right here. This is the main thing. Know your music, know your music well, know these different sections. And this can actually also lead to remixing, to 
um, a whole bunch of other things as well once you know these different sections, even producing your own songs, sampling different parts of records, you now know that and you know the structure of it. It'll also help you when you want to get into making your own music, you'll know the structure of some of the great songs that are out there. And you'll be so focused on structure that then um, going and arranging a track on your own will be way less daunting. You'll know exactly how to, how to build it. So this is giving you the inner workings of this. I also want to point out that the, one of the great things here that you'll also find on uh, record pools like BPM Supreme is that the intro, you want enough of an intro. So if you've got songs that you've just downloaded from um, iTunes or whatnot, you'll notice that the intros are not very long probably for most of those songs. BPM Supreme is a great resource to be able to find those extended intros, right? So when you see that inside of the record pool, download the, the intro clean, the intro dirty, download the intro versions because they'll come with these, this tool essentially at the front end of the track. Um, I highly recommend it. It makes mixing not only easier, but it just makes it sound better to just have drums and this like intro before it so that you can really create that blending moment. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. I will see you on the next one.